So I saw an article linked uh, this morning on the Basketball Intelligence uh, newsletter that's sent out, uh, you know, every day on kind of NBA stories. And it was an article that was talking about the best uh, handles in the NBA. I think it was written by Isaiah Thomas. And he was talking about the importance of having a handle as breaking ankles, uh, which is wrong. Uh, it, it sounds good and it's what uh, people want to hear. And from a showmanship standpoint or getting respect from peers, there's definitely that aspect. But ultimately, the value of one's dribbling skill is creating a shot or a pass. Um, just being able to make moves uh, doesn't have a lot of value. Uh, now, you can use moves to help create a pass or shot, but ultimately, the dribble is not an end in and of itself. Uh, you don't just dribble in plays. You don't just dri make dribble moves. You have to use a dribble to do something. And that something generally is uh, creating a pass or creating a shot, whether you're simply creating a passing angle or whether you're drawing defenders to you to create a pass to an open player or you're creating your own shot um, by getting open away from your own defender or dribbling into, you know, an open shot. So, uh to only talk about the actual movement of dribbling and what you do with the ball, to me, is too simplistic and uh, misses the most important aspects of the dribble. Um, again, it's not artistry, um, although it can be. Uh, you know, and some of the players that uh, he named uh, certainly do use the dribble to create shots and passes very effectively. Um, Steph Curry was one of the first ones that he named and obviously he uses his dribble um, you know to draw players to him to find an open player or to dribble into his own shot uh, and so this to me is what the message needs to be to players is the move is only effective if it helps to create a shot or a pass um, simply making a move has no real value um, in terms of the game now if you're trying to impress somebody if you're out on the playground uh, if you're trying to gain respect, uh, you know, from peers, something like this, then there can be just inherent value in making a move and, and you know, breaking ankles and so on and so forth. But in terms of the game of basketball, uh, the dribble is used to create a shot or a pass. Um, and without that end, ending, um, the move or the dribbling or whatever lacks value. There's no points given for number of ankles broken. You simply get points when you can create that shot or create a pass. And that's what the dribble is used for. And that's how we should determine who has a good handle, who's able to beat their defender, draw help and make the pass, who's able to beat their defender, pull up for a shot, who's able to create passing lanes with their dribble, um, who's able to get out of double teams to exploit a trapping situation and create an advantage for a teammate or a big advantage for their team. Uh, these are the effective uses of the dribble and the uses that we want players to be able to do. All the fancy drills and, and, and stuff that goes on is fine if it uh, helps to uh, enable the players to perform these things in the game better. If all those drills in the world help you to get out of a trap, help you to create big advantages for your team, help you to create shots, help you to create passing lanes, help you to draw defense to get a teammate open, then they're having an effect. If all they do is help you to continue making, you know, more and more complicated or harder drills to do in the off season, then they're lacking the transfer to game and they're really lacking a positive effect on your performance. Um, and then it's questionable whether or not, uh, you know, it's an effective use of time. Uh, so again, dribbling is not an end. You use the dribble to create a pass or shot, and the measure of one's ball handling ability is not a number of ankles broken, but the ability to create shots for oneself and shots for a teammate.